Hey guys, uh, welcome to the first video in a long while. It's been a fair bit of time, I do apologise, but I've been somewhat busy with university, so I haven't really been able to uh, do any videos lately. Uh, before we start, you guys may have noticed the gate, the channel has changed. It's now called Games Design 101. So from now on, the only videos on this channel will be Games Design videos for Unity, UDK, uh, Unreal Engine 4, CryEngine, any other engine you guys want me to uh, go over with you guys and whatnot. Uh, this uh, page will only be dedicated to games design. However, I will do videos for animation and some for modeling later down the line. Is if you guys want to see that. Basically, imagine this channel now as a teaching method for anyone who wants to pick up games design and learn the basics without having to pay for a course or self-learn. <clears throat> Before I showed you basically how to... Uh, how to white box an area and then populate it. Now I promise to show you how to light a level. Now I've got a level up nearly which is already built as you can see. Uh, you won't be seeing this. This is, We're going to do a render shot basically so don't worry about any of this. All we're going to render is this shot here. Hold on. For, it'll be basically, it's basically for lighting texturing. So this shot here is going to be all lit and you're going to be able to see it all. So we need to make it look nice. So first things first let's introduce you to the lights UDK has. So if I go to Content Browser, open that thing up, the easiest items, we'll get to them in a sec. You go into Actor Classes, you scroll down to Lights, <clears throat> you have Directional, Point, Skylight, and Spotlights. Directional Light is basically like a sun. If I drop one of these in, if I drop a Directional Light in, generally, actually, you want to use Dominant. You can never have more than one Dominant Light in at a scene at a time, but since you're only ever going to have one Directional Light, Dominant is okay. Toggleable means it can be turned on and off using Kismet. I'll explain that in the next video. And uh, movable means you can basically move it around. Uh, but generally, if you want it to be static, you use a directional, uh, sorry, dominant directional light or directional light, whichever one you want to use. Generally, I use dominant. So I drop this into the scene. <clears throat> you will see it becomes lit up straight away. There's a ton of light everywhere, and I can actually edit it to sort of position where I want the shadows to be. So I could have the shadows like that if I wanted even rotate it around a bit more so it's it's a nice little technique now what people don't know is there's one lighting system you should never use it's not really used anymore in games whatsoever and that's skylights so if i drop a skylight in you can see it's lit the scene again but compared to dominal direction uh, a dominant directional light there's no shadows around the level and everything is lit everything is the same light uh like density so everything has light shine on it there's no source of light, you can't edit it, Doesn't editing does nothing to this thing. See? Now these are really only good for when you're building a level. So if you, for example, want to build a level and uh, you want to obviously see a level as you're building it, you'll drop a, a skylight in just to make sure everything's lit so you can see where you're putting things. Because without it, as you can imagine, if I turn this on, it's actually quite dark, it's hard to see where you're putting a few things. Uh, so, skylights, so, sorry if I sound a bit ill by the way, I've got a bit of a sore throat. So I do apologise. Skylights are only used when you're building your level. Once again, it also has a toggleable one, meaning you can turn it on and off using Kismet. I'll explain that in the Kismet video, which should be the next one. I do apologise if, if this video is in two parts, simply because I don't want it exceeding over about 15 minutes, because that's when it starts to get a bit long and slow. I know you guys would rather have short burst videos, so I'm trying to keep nine the time. So I do apologise if this goes over 15 minutes. Okay, so... Most likely in this first section, I'll only introduce the light systems to you and show you how they work. The next system will be how to implement skyboxes and uh, how a light system to like a moon or a sun. And then we'll probably light the uh, scene on that one as well. Okay, so I've introduced you to skylights and direction lights. Direction lights is something you should use if you have a sun. So outdoor area is basically a good for direction lights. Um, you've got point lights and spotlights left. If I grab a point light, a normal one. Obviously, you've got the movable toggleable and uh, dominant point light as well for this. So if I drop a point light here, where'd it go? Uh, that's how the scene, isn't it? Let's just close this a sec. Let's drag it up. There we go. Okay, you can start to see what a point light does. It has an area of effect. I'll show you now. If I drag this down, there we go. You can start to see what it does there. So as an area of effect, it's a it's a radius point light. You can see the radius bounds there. There we go. Now, if I double click on this, it'll bring up some settings. We can sort of edit the radius to what we want. Shrinking it down obviously decreases the radius. So if I drag this down, you'll be able to see. If I do this, you can sort of see the radius will shrink. It also has a fallout exposure. So if I change this to one, 
you can sort of see it gets better. The lower it is, the less fallout it has. Yep. Also has a shadow fallout as well. It's the same sort of method. It only decreases the shadows. Okay. Here you have your brightness. So if you want it really, really bright, like that, you can be. Or you want it really, really dark. Or just a little bit of tint, like that, you can. You have a light colour, so you want it to be a blue light. Or like a neon light, you can have it like that. You want it to be a red light, you can have it that, you know. All kinds of effects you can get with this. You can also do something which is quite interesting. Now, you notice you got unnamed 1, unnamed 2, unnamed 3, BCP, static, dynamic, and control, uh, compose dynamic. Now, these are lighting channels. So, basically, you can make something affect something and only something alone. So, that may sound a bit strange, but I'll, I'll show you what I mean. So, for example, if you tick unnamed 1 on this lighting system here, and you dis deselect static, bypass, blah, 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 blah. actually, we need to talk about so you can sort of see what that does now. It it doesn't like the floor anymore. But if we were to take this floor, this is this is half a floor as you can see, and we go into its lighting, which is here, and we'll oop, wrong one, and we'll go down to lighting channels and we click on that one. It'll only light that section. There you go. That's a great example for you. So if I click off that. You can sort of see, even though the radius is in both of them, since this is only one with a name done it, it only lights this area. So if I untick this, light goes away. Take it, light comes back. As well. Makes sense. It can be used to light up objects if you want to show a player where to go. It's it, it's quite useful in a lot of scenarios, so I do recommend you guys experiment with this. That's only affecting compose because this is composed here. So oh, I didn't mean to click that. That's the wrong one. So I click on this. So it's just because uh, if I go into light mass, it's because dynamic shadows, you see. This is a skeletal mesh. That's why it's only affecting this. The lighting on this is a bit different. It's It's kind of annoying to mess with. Um, okay, so that's the point light. Get rid of this. Whoops. Let's put that back on. Get rid of that. Uh, click open this again. Now I'm going to show you guys the final light, which is a spotlight. And by the name, I, I guess you guys can sort of realize what it does. So I've placed this down. Once again, it's way over there. Well, okay, there we go. You can sort of see what a spotlight does. It's 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 in the name. So spotlights, as you can imagine, create a, a cone shape, which in this cone shape is lit. So if I get rid of this, open up this. Once again, you have the same options. You can change the lights here, so the radius of the cone. So that basically increases its uh, length. You can also increase the brightness if you want. So, for example, yeah. And you can also edit the cone uh, spaces. So I'll put that to 22. Put that to 100. You get the idea. So that can be edited as well. Just be careful when you're editing it because you can get stuff like this. So see, interesting stuff. You can make very much. You can make a lot of shapes and whatnot with this uh, sort of uh, system. You can sort of see how that's lit there, like that. Cool. I right, so let's just reset that down to 44. Let's reset that down to this one. There you go. And let's decrease the radius and reduce the brightness. Okay. Once again, you can also do uh, lighting with this like that. You can also change the color if you must so please to whatever you like. So we got there's the four basic lighting systems you have in UDK at your exposure. There's a few other things you need to know as well. Each object has a let me find it for you guys. It may be in here. Actually, no, it's in Content Browser, isn't it? I think it's in Content Browser. Let's just double check. Um, that's a resolution, distance, load. Uh, where is it? Each uh, object has a, a light mass radius. Actually, I think it might be on light mass. Make more sense. And basically, you could adjust it. So, I mean, BCP would be easy for me to show you guys on. But, oh, yeah. So, each of them has a, a res for a light mass. And you can edit these. And depending on what you put, I think it, if it works with BCP brushes, the higher it is, the better quality your shadows are on your lighting, the lower it is, the worse quality. Uh, for static meshes, it's the higher it is, the better, the lower it is, the worst, and skeletal meshes is a bit different. So that's how that works. Light mass is a very complex sort of thing. It's not something I should really be teaching you guys in basic. I just thought I'd put that out there so you know. There is something like light mass out there. So let me check the time. Okay, we've been going for 10 minutes. Uh, I'll most likely end this video here. That was the basic introductions into uh, the different kinds of uh, 
lighting options you do have in UDK. I do recommend you guys go play with these before going on to the second lighting video because we're going to hit into uh, a lot more like a lot more a little bit more complex subjects like how to actually make a uh, direction light into a sun or a moon using a skybox. I'm going to cover bounce lighting. I'm going to cover using particle effects and rays to make the scene look a lot better. Lighting can really make a scene, guys. I'm just going to put that out there. This will only be basic, by the way. Don't expect anything majorly amazing coming out of this. It's going to be very basic. Yeah, I'll only put it together in 15 minutes. Generally, if you guys are making a level, it should be, you should be spending about 30 to 40 minutes per light. Just tweaking it slightly, depending on how much detail you want to go into the level. So, I'm going to end this video here. Uh, guys, I do appreciate you listening. This has uh, been XLX on the basics of lighting. That's light shafts, by the way. I'll explain that as well next to 10. Uh, I hope you enjoyed. If you did, uh, like, like, subscribe, rate, whatever you want to do. I don't really care. If you want to leave a comment on if you got confused or anything, if you want me to go over anything in more detail, let me know. Uh, after this video, I'll be going over matinee sequences. Well, sorry, after this section, should I say, not video. After this section of lighting, I'll be going on to matinee sequences and then Kismet. And then I'll be taking any requests. So just let me know what you want to see, guys, and I'll uh, get right onto it. Okay. This has uh, been me, and I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope it was uh, insightful. I hope you managed to pick up the basics and understand what the basics, the basic settings in UDK does. Cheers, guys. I do appreciate it. Bye.